So let's talk about some of this quarterback stuff still. It's it's what's on everybody's mind. Cam Newton gets hurt. It opens the door, at least for Mac Jones. I guess we can say it opens the door for Jared Stidham as well. Well, he was but, he was the big performer on Friday. So yeah, we'll get to Stidham in a second. But well, what do you want to see out of Mac? And let, we can also include this with mini camp as well, because mini camp is starts uh Monday through Wednesday of next week. So we we might not talk about it necessarily uh, before mini camp gets underway. But what do you want to see from Mac on Thursday next week to sort of, is there a chance, like as, as we titled this show, is there a chance that this injury for Cam Newton can actually expedite the Patriots to getting to Mac Jones faster? Yes and no. Uh, I, I, I think it can if they're willing to let it happen. And I, this goes back to what I've been saying since before Cam resigned. I don't know that Bill Belichick can quit Cam Newton. I don't know that he can. But if if they are open to the idea of it be like I, I'm working under the assumption that they are op- that they're not open to the idea of an open competition. That right. Cam's going to be the start of week one, regardless of what happens. That's already made up. That the mind's already made up. Unless Cam can't throw week one, and then it's a discussion. If they are, if it is a real competition and Bill's willing to open his mind and let Mac potentially start, then this definitely opens the door because not only does it allow Mac mini camp time that Cam doesn't have, Mac's going to hit the ground running. He's been throwing, he's been working with these guys where Cam Newton and and granted he's, he's a veteran. So I don't know how much this affects him, but he's coming in cold a little bit. So there's maybe a little bit of a bend there where Mac's been able to build chemistry with these guys. Well, Sam, well, Cam is, you know, sitting in the training room, icing his hand or whatever he's doing. Yeah, and there's no doubt about it that the Patriots so far have treated Mac Jones differently than the other quarterbacks out at OTAs so far. I mean, when we saw them last last week, Mac Jones was working basically it had a different practice routine for the first 30, 45 minutes with Josh McDaniels where he's doing his own drills, right? He's doing his own, t- right. his own thing. And they are – I'm not going to – I don't know what the right word is for it, but they're certainly – emphasizing Mac Jones a lot more, especially Josh McDaniel's time, a lot more focused on Mac than we've I've ever seen with any quarterback, really. I mean, besides maybe I I guess if you were around when Jimmy Garoppolo was was a rookie, you can speak to that more. We weren't, but with Jared Stidham when he came in, he was just another one of of the guys in line. Right. You know, right. He, he was not somebody that was getting pulled to the side by McDaniels or was working on drills with McDaniels exclusively on a, in a different section where the rest of the offense was someplace else. So they clearly have a calculated plan in place for how they are going to handle this with Mac Jones to the point where they're doing it out at practice already where he's sort of doing his own thing at times. Right. So my gut tells me that if they're doing all these things, even already at OTAs, and they have this detailed of a plan in mind, I kind of find it hard to believe that an injury to Cam Newton would take them off that track, right? Because that right. risks long-term side effects to Mac Jones, right? We saw in the past where you throw a quarterback, the, the one that everybody always goes to is David Carr, right? The, the, the Texans put David Carr in the game behind a terrible offensive line. He got killed and his whole career kind of went down the drain. Right. The other one that you can kind of talk to is Josh Rosen, right? Who's another player that got thrown into the fire behind a bad O line and the thing went south. Now, the Patriots have a very good O line. Mac Jones is going to be put in that position. But clearly, what I'm getting at is that they have, whether it's this year or next year, I, I hope it's this year, they have a date in mind, I think, already of when they would feel comfortable. Unless Mac really does something to to expedite the process, they have a date in mind that he's going to get in there. And I just find it really hard to believe that now, because Cam got a, a bone bruise on his thumb, that he's going to miss a, uh, a couple of weeks, that they're going to just throw that entire plan out the door because Mac looks good in, in shorts. Right at an right. OTA practice, it just it to me this is bigger than than Cam Newton's thumb, right? Is yeah, I guess I, what I'm getting at. Absolutely. And, and real quick, by the way, if you're just joining, my power's out, which is why I'm sitting like this. I want to remind people because if yes. not, I look like a lunatic. I I think it's funny with Cam, with with Mac because the whole thing with Mac in the draft was 
he's one of the most NFL ready quarterbacks out did not be a top pick in a, in a long time. The only reason he really was a first round pick, I think was that he's a guy that could plug and play right away. You weren't drafting him that high for the upside. It was, if you want to add your young quarterback and start the rebuild and really hit the ground rolling, here's the guy. And now all of a sudden the most NFL ready quarterback prospect in years, isn't NFL ready enough for Bill Belichick and the Patriots. So that's the irony in it. And I, I don't know if that's Mac Jones. I think that's more just, you know, they value experience so much at every position. That's what they do. I'm not knocking it, by the way. It's a big reason they are where they are. They understand that experience is valuable. Remember Tom Brady's comments about having the answers to the test. There's certainly some truth to that. I just think with Mac, for me, what it comes down to is what stood out to me about him in Alabama not necessarily were the plays he made, but the plays he didn't. You know, you just watch those games and, and and you didn't really realize until after, but the kid just didn't make mistakes. Yeah. He, he, there weren't a ton of wow moments where you're like, wow, that's a great play. But you never said, wow, what a dumb play. Wow, what was he doing? Like he was in command, the full 60 minutes, all of that. And I think they like that. And it just comes down to how long it takes him to prove that he that, that will carry over to the NFL level that he won't make mistakes at the NFL level that we saw at practice on Friday after he had a great first session, there were some more rookie mistakes from him on Friday. So that's, you know, it's kind of interesting where if you flip the sessions, right. And max so, so in the first session, and he's a great second session. When cam hurts his thumb, all of a sudden we're talking about max making all this progress and it's destined. Right. I don't want to say, I don't want to say Mac took a step back. He was never going to hit that bar. He hit the first practice that that was ridiculous, but I, you know, I, I think that's kind of what it comes down to is they're just going to wait until the mistakes, I think dip below a certain threshold and then they'll feel good with him. Cause that's what it comes down to. The Patriots believe they can win games if they don't turn the ball over that. If you just hold on to the football and don't turn it over, everything else will take care of itself. And there is some truth to that. And they went seven that, and nine with a turnover machine at quarterback, quite frankly. So you could see it right. last year that if they have a couple of those games, Kansas city is obviously the biggest example, but if you have a couple of those games where the ball isn't getting turned over like crazy, they're going to be 10 and six last year, 11 and five, you know, have a much better record. Right. And you mentioned that Mac Jones is a quarterback. They, they, just, want, they just want to know that Mac isn't going to turn the ball over. I think that's what it right. comes down to. And you mentioned that he's a quarterback that didn't seldom made mistakes at Alabama. And I think a re real reason why he didn't make mistakes at Alabama as much was because of the fact that he knew the system so well. And he had really mastered that Alabama playbook and they had sort of mastered how to call plays for him with Steve Sarkeesian. And if you don't feel like Mac Jones in week one or week two, week three is ready at that level to run the playbook, then he doesn't have the physical tools to make up for it, right? He's got to win with his brain and that that's the type of quarterback that he is and i think he's fully capable of doing that but he's got to be able to win, win a little bit with his brain and if they don't feel like he knows the system well enough and he's not there yet then it's not going to look pretty for him because he's not somebody like josh allen or like patrick mahomes or like lamar jackson who can just go out there and play on physical gifts right and, and just right look good on physical gifts. He's going to have to win with his brain. He's going to have to be the smartest guy in the huddle until we get to that point. I think playing him could, could jeopardize his confidence and I wouldn't do that. Now I think Mac is somebody that's a little bit more resilient, a little bit tougher than someone that's just going to let a few bad games bury him. But I, I still don't want to put him out there in that position.